Danny completely distraught tries to reach her parents who have been ignoring her repeated calls sitting anxiously in front of her computer she reads her sister's unsettling message over and over again desperately trying to decipher its hidden meaning feeling the weight of her concerns Danny calls her boyfriend Christian hoping for reassurance however his response falls short of her expectations he dismisses her fears claiming that she is overthinking her sister's email suggesting that it is merely another attention-seeking ploy Danny's frustration grows for he fails to understand the complex nature of her sister's bipolar disorder once the call ends Danny contacts her friend she confides in her friend about her concerns regarding her relationship with her boyfriend questioning whether her neediness is pushing him away rightfully her friend offers a different perspective suggesting that if she truly feels that way he might not be the right person for her after all danny decides to reach out to her sister once again hoping for a response that will alleviate her worries as she hastily types out an email her phone rings displaying an unfamiliar number on the screen meanwhile christian finds himself out and about with his friends engaged in a conversation about her they offer him their advice suggesting that he should part ways with Danny due to her overbearing nature just then his phone rings once more as Christian picks up the call he has met with the anguished sounds of Danny's cries from the other and it turns out Danny's concern hadn't been for nothing in parallel a group of firefighters is shown forcefully entering Danny's parents house within the confines of the home they discover Danny's parents lifeless their bodies resting motionless upon their bed Danny's sister has taken her own life, tragically drawing their parents with, her two time passes and Danny remains in, a state of profound sorrow seeking to, uplift her spirits Christian proposes to, attend a party Danny although not, particularly enthusiastic about the idea, agrees to join him anyway the party, Danny's attention is immediately, captured by a conversation between, Christian and his group of friends Pele, Josh and Mark they are discussing there, plans for a summer trip to Sweden which, Danny is hearing about for the first, time back at her apartment Danny, confronts Christian demanding to know, why he kept the trip a secret from her, confused and frustrated Danny questions, why Christian wasn't open with her about, such an important event in their lives, as her words sink in Danny's concern, deepens fearing that her strong stance, might lead to their relationship's end, sometime later Christian shares with his, Friends that he has invited Danny to, come along on the trip his friends are, annoyed by his revelation nevertheless, they reassure Christian that they will, pretend they were already aware of the, invitation and that they harbor no ill, feelings towards Danny as Danny arrives, the group greets her but their behavior, is undeniably awkward sensing the, tension mark suggests to Christian that, they retreat to another room seemingly, wanting to discuss something privately, Pele engages in conversation with Danny, while Josh pays her no attention curious, about the plans Pella has made for their, group in his village Danny inquires, because her her birthday coincides with, their arrival date Pele reveals that his, small community hosts a magnificent, nine day festival during that time, intrigued Pele shares some captivating, photos from past festivities leaving, Danny thoroughly impressed out of them, Blue Pele expresses his joy that she, will be joining them additionally he, offers his condolences for the loss of, her parents revealing his ability to, empathize as he has experienced a, similar tragedy in his own life Danny's, emotions surge and she rushes to the, bathroom finally they arrive in Sweden, and embark on a journey to palace, village as their group makes a stop in a, field they witness a gathering of other, young individuals Pele's brother Ingmar, warmly welcomes them introducing his, friend Simon and Connie to the group, adding an unexpected twist to the evening Ingmar offers them some hallucinogenic mushrooms although, hesitant at first Danny reluctantly joins, the others in partaking as time passes, they find themselves experiencing the profound effects of the drug amidst the enchanting ambience Danny's ears catch a distant melody triggering a sudden rush of fear and anxiety passing a group of people Danny becomes the subject of their amusement laughter fills the air, aimed at her expense Ingmar recognizing, her distress attempts to soothe her, troubled mind but she can't contain her, unease overwhelmed by her emotions Danny, flees into a bathroom the enclosed space, only amplifies her anguish as she, experiences horrifying hallucinations, finally Danny awakens from her torment, Christian reveals that they have awaited, her return to consciousness for six, hours rejoined by the rest of the group, 
they continue their journey through the woods at last the group arrives at a hidden village nestled in the forest the community's inhabitants extend a warm welcome their festive attire adding splashes of peace danny gradually immersed in the serene atmosphere allows herself to be captivated by the beauty of the village and its inhabitants pella warmly greets one of the esteemed elders who eagerly welcomes him the elder shares the exciting new news that the official festivities are set to commence the following day just then a captivating melody captures their attention there the revered elder Siv extends a heartfelt welcome to all marking the beginning of the festival and wishes everyone a joyous midsummer she reminds the gathered crowd that it has been an astounding 90 years since their last grand celebration and adds that it will be another 90 years before the next one glasses are raised and the air fills with cheerful cheers amidst the revelry the focus shifts momentarily to a child with a disability engrossed in their world sketching away separate from the ceremony later on amidst the spirited dance maya one of the girls in the community playfully kicks christian's backside as she passes by inspired by her energy christian and josh decide to join in the merriment amid the joyous chaos pele gives danny a portrait for her birthday danny gratefully receives the present expressing her gratitude while sharing that Christian had forgotten about it. After some time time Pele takes the group on a tour around the village, satisfying Josh's curiosity about the community they come across a group of children engrossed in a grassy area, learning about the power of the ancient. Runes Connie seizes the opportunity to inquire about the duration of Danny and Christian's relationship only to receive conflicting responses well now's the perfect time for her to ditch her irresponsible boyfriend deciding to Explore further the group splits into two Ingmar leads his guests past a confined bear taking a moment to share a heartfelt love story found on a lengthy parchment on the other hand Pele guides his friends to their accommodations a cabin that is shared among the community members while Danny explores the building she stumbles upon a wall adorned with photographs showcasing the May Queens of the past Christian however beckons Danny outside and begins to serenade her with a last minute happy birthday attempting to light a birthday candle at first he fabricates an excuse claiming that he hadn't forgotten but was disoriented due to the incessant daylight but as Danny sees through his falsity he apologizes that night Pele gathers everyone together emphasizing the importance of the day that lies ahead the reasons behind this significance keeps the knowledge to himself Christian also discovers that the place is devoid of cellular service with the arrival of Dawn the long-awaited celebration of the festival's first day commences curiosity, brimming within him Christian leans in, and asks Pele how long they will be, standing Pele replies cryptically, revealing that they will remain standing, until the time is right to sit Danny approaches Christian presenting him with, a bouquet suddenly a bell rings, announcing the arrival of an elderly, couple who had received torches during, the previous day's events they take their seats at the table and the entire community follows suit settling down for the feast josh inquires if this couple is the one they have been waiting for pele affirms his query danny talks with one of the women present who reveals a fascinating cultural aspect of the community they collectively raise the children suddenly the elder couple rises from their seats respectfully everyone in attendance stands raising their glasses in a heartfelt toast to honor the couple the two of them are then carried away in their chairs to the cliff the others follow in anticipation the elderly couple ceremoniously cut their palms anointing ancient runes with their blood the woman takes her place at the edge of the cliff ready to leap with a mixture of awe and horror the onlookers watch as she hurls herself into the void crashing onto the ground below the shock reverberates through danny's leaving her utterly speechless meanwhile ingmar consoles the shaken Simon and Connie the horror doesn't end, here as the man follows suit instead of, meeting a fatal end immediately he's, still alive at the bottom of the cliff, just then his face is hammered to end, his life SIV explains the rituals to the, foreigners the people willingly, surrender their lives before the ravages, of time and decay can taint their, existence embracing the belief that they, preserve purity through sacrifice as the, community strolls back to the village, Christian returns to the cabin to find, Josh already there engrossed in his, thesis work determined Christian reveals, his decision to focus his thesis on the, 
village however Josh becomes furious as, Christian knew all along that he, intended to write about the midsummer, festival Christian suggests, collaborating on the thesis or pursuing, separate ones on the same subject Josh, immediately tells Pelly about the, situation who explains that it doesn't, matter what they want to write about, because the village elders guard their, rituals closely and would never allow, outsiders to document them we find Danny, frantically packing her belongings but, Pelly approaches her for a conversation, he apologizes expressing his desire to, share this experience with his friends, Danny confides in Pelle confessing her, lack of understanding Pella reassures, her admitting that he was most excited, about her arrival he empathizes with her, pain revealing that he too lost his, parents in a tragic fire during his, youth however he found solace in a new, family within the community and he wants, to offer Danny the same sense of, belonging later that day the bodies of, the elderly couple are ceremoniously, disposed of per village rituals, Christian checks on Danny but she, questions whether he was genuinely, affected by the unsettling sights they, witnessed he reassures her that he was, indeed disturbed but believes it stems, from cultural disparities that night, Danny approaches Josh desperately seeking, a sleeping pill however even with, medication she is jolted awake by, mysterious noises during the night, surrounded by empty beds she decides to, follow the small group of people outside, to her astonishment she discovers, Christian and his friends among them, overwhelmed by a surge of emotions Danny, screams her mind bombarded with haunting, images from the earlier ritual each, image flashes vividly intensifying her, distress until her own family's image, appears at the edge of a cliff, unbeknownst to Danny this is all just a, terrifying nightmare plaguing her, subconscious however Maya is wide awake, and observes Danny's turmoil she, approaches Christian's bed and, discreetly places something underneath, it meanwhile Josh who happens to be, nearby notices her gesture on the second, day we find Pelly tending to the garden, when he is approached by Mark and Josh, Joas is eager to complete his thesis seeks, Pella's advice Pelly tells him that he, can write his thesis but with one, condition he must change the names and, location to maintain confidentiality, additionally Pelly mentions that Josh, needs to collaborate with Christian Josh also asks Pele about the mysterious object that Maya left under Christian's bed Pele reveals that it's probably a love rune just then Christian joins the group and Pella fills him in on the news about Josh's thesis Pele also hints that Maya might like him suddenly there conversation is interrupted by the sound of a man screaming they turn their heads and see the man running toward Mark who happens to be relieving himself on a dead tree the man appears furious but the others manage to restrain him Pelly takes Mark aside and explains the significance of the ancestral tree meanwhile Connie is searching for Simon to leave the awful place together an elderly man informs him that Simon has already left this baffles both Connie and Danny as it is the last thing Simon would do unlike Christian Simon seems to genuinely care about his partner Danny later confides in Christian about, Simon's disappearance however Christian, seems rather indifferent to the, situation and resumes his conversation, with a man about the topic of maid, approval within their community Danny in, the meantime receives an invitation from, one of the women to join them in the, kitchen the women inform her that they, are preparing meat pies and Danny, eagerly joins among the women Maya is, also present she sets aside the pie she, has made meanwhile Josh engages in a, conversation with one of the village, elders their discussion revolves around, the sacred scrolls which hold great, significance in their community these, scrolls are fascinating because they, always have blank pages near the end, symbolizing their ever-changing nature, interestingly the last page is filled, with the disabled child we have seen, earlier it is the child's duty to draw, on these empty spaces and the elders, possess the wisdom to interpret the, meaning behind the drawings he also, reveals that all of their oracles are, intentionally a result of careful, breeding within their community mark, roams around the yellow sacred temple, searching for the girl he had noticed on, the first day suddenly a child, interrupts his search calling him to, join the others for dinner as they, gather for the meal they are served meat, pies amidst the feast Danny inquires, about Connie's whereabouts a villager, informs her that Connie had been driven, to the station to meet Simon Danny finds, it difficult to believe as Christian, takes a bite of the pie a shocking, 
Discovery awaits him a single pubic hair, he looks at Maya it is reminiscent of, the ritual and the parchment that we, have seen earlier during the tour Marcus, also abruptly called by the very girl he, had been searching for takes another sleeping pill from Josh who driven by curiosity goes to the cabin that has the ancient scroll, although he was repeatedly asked to not photograph it he still tries to get a picture for his thesis he's caught in the act by Mark who's relieved that it's just his friend and not a member of the community however as Joash inches closer, he realizes something is amiss suddenly, a forceful blow strikes him on the head, as the disabled child wearing Mark's Skin looms over him during breakfast. Danny inquires about the whereabouts of Mark and Josh but Christian dismisses. Her concerns one of the elders solemnly announces the theft of the sacred scroll, pleading for its safe return as breakfast concludes two elders approach Christian and Danny to inquire about the disappearance of their friends as they suspect them of stealing their scroll. Christian quickly throws Josh under the bus washing his hands clean of Suspicion so not only is he a trashy boyfriend but he's also a trashy friend. Pelly steps forward to take responsibility for their actions Danny is then swept away with the other women. Christian on the other hand has an important meeting with SIV that awaits him in the midst of all this a special tea is being prepared for the women. Little does Danny know that the tea she has consumed may contain mushrooms it's a revelation that hits her just as the ritual is about to commence the older woman announces the beginning of the competition and the women gracefully start dancing in a circle meanwhile siv wastes no time in informing christian that he has been chosen to mate with maya back at the dance the women continue their movements but one by one they succumb to the effects of the mushrooms gracefully bowing out of the competition christian now part of the observing crowd is offered some of the mushroom tea by one of the women as the number of participants dwindles leaving only three danny unexpectedly begins speaking in swedish with one of the other girls in the end danny stands alone the sole survivor of the competition the crowd rises forming a circle around her the older woman bestows upon her the crown of the may queen they photographed the auspicious moment and pell steps forward and kisses her danny is lifted high into the air and carried towards the grand table Seated at the head Danny becomes the center of attention the entire village erupts and cheers and applause there, joyous voices echoing through the air as they celebrate the crowning of the May Queen they embrace her declaring that she's now an integral part of their close-knit family amidst the festivities. Maya beckons Christian to follow her into the rustic barn SIV approaches Danny, emphasizing the sacred duty that befalls the May Queen she instructs Danny to bestow her blessings upon the crops a task that demands her undivided presence. The May Queen gracefully steps into a carriage a group of young women from the village eagerly pulling it forward the crowd stands in anticipation as she is ceremoniously driven away leaving Christian behind as he's not allowed to accompany her as the villagers shift, their focus Christian is summoned once, again to the barn Christian finds, himself under the watchful eye of the, village elders who prepare him for a, peculiar copulation ritual with Maya, they administer a potent substance, causing Christian senses to blur as he, has led towards the waiting young woman, ready to be made the chorus of women, begins to sing creepily during the ACT, meanwhile the May Queen returns to the, village a woman approaches her informing her of SIV's desire to speak with her. She hears something from the barn and curiosity peeks she makes her way to it. Danny unable to resist her intuition, cautiously peeks into the barn her eyes, widening in shock at the sight before her overwhelmed she rushes outside her voice erupting into anguish screams the other women quickly come to her aid, leading her away from the distressing scene and taking her to her bed in her state of distress Danny's cries grow more intense the other women begin to mimic her cries Christian done with the ritual flees the barn only to see Josh's severed leg buried in the flower bed he seeks refuge in a shed and stumbles upon the lifeless body of Simon turned into a blood eagle as if fate has other plans he's paralyzed by the village elders by the admission of some drug when Christian wakes up he discovers that he has been rendered completely immobile, and robbed of his ability to speak. Meanwhile the grand culmination of the Midsummer Richmond is about to unfold. 
SIV announces that the time has come for nine sacrifices to be made for from within their own ranks four foreigners and one individual chosen by the queen. Two lives have already been surrendered from their community a pivotal decision awaits her should she select a resident or Christian for the sacrifice she makes her choice and slowly the lifeless bodies are transported to the sacred temple elders and a select few children meticulously prepare the culmination of this dark ritual astonishingly Christian is stuffed alive into a bare carcass as the elders bestow their blessings upon this offering the villagers receive their share of potent drugs the temple is ceremoniously set ablaze engulfing all within its confines as the flames consume the structure the villagers convulse and weep in front gazing upon the inferno the may queen danny gazes at the mess with an unsettling smile